guys, it's Amanda. If you saw my last video, you saw that my grandpa passed away. I want to talk about just who my grandpa was. I feel like it's worth making a video acknowledging the amazing human being that he was and the legacy that he left. Grandpa Smitty, he was 96 years old and he was an amazing human being. He really, really was. First of all, let's just talk about, he was born in 1919, so just imagine all of the things that he has seen and experienced in his life. It's just kind of mind-boggling to think just the changes in this world that he has seen. He lived through the Great Depression and that really affected how he handled his money, first of all. Um, he's always been incredibly wise with his money. Um, and I really think that, you know, him and my other grandparents who also lived through the depression really passed that ethic on living really frugally and within your means. I really feel like that's a value that I have really held on to um, that really made an impression on me. <laughs> you know, it's like one of the things I vlog about a lot, right, is living within our means. And um, he did that so well. He was so wise with his money, you know, because he had lived through the Great Depression. And then he married his college sweetheart, my grandma. We were married for a couple years and had my uncle. And when my uncle was two years old, my grandpa was drafted into World War II. He was a medic in World War II, so he was never actually fighting, but he was one of the people that was going out and, you know, getting all of the wounded soldiers and bringing them back to the hospital off the battlefield. We heard lots of war stories from him as I was growing up, although there were a number of things that he didn't tell as well. I think that my grandpa's view of war, having been in one, also really had a big impact on my view of war. Um, he said that it, having seen it firsthand and its ugliness, he says that it's something that we, that nobody should, no person should ever have to experience. Um, you know, it was, especially in World War II, you know, it was one of those things where it was like, it was a necessary evil. <laughs> it was one of these things that had to be done. But he feels like a lot of wars that have been fought since um, are not necessary, especially considering how horrible war is and um, what that does to veterans psychologically. Have, you know, having been there himself, like he can say that because he was there and he saw it all. Um, and he saw a lot of ugly things there, being a medic especially, <laughs> as you can imagine. So that really has influenced um, my view on how we should be treating each other as a, species, as a human species, you know, that like war is a terrible thing that we really should not be doing, <laughs> you know? We should not be killing each other. Every once in a blue moon, it is necessary, but my grandpa actually said it's hell on earth. So um, it really should be avoided at all costs and really we should be working towards a peaceful world. And his view on that just really, really made an impact on me. During the time that he was in World War II, um, I believe it was two years, two years straight that he was away from my grandma while she was at home raising a, two, you know, a small child. And being a parent of small children right now, I have a whole new appreciation and respect for what they went through. Like I cannot imagine having my husband being gone solid for two years. Um, Obviously, they wrote letters to each other, and I would love to read them sometime. You know, the letters that they wrote back and forth to each other for two years, and the pictures, you know, sending the pictures of my uncle as he grew, and how difficult that must have been for my grandma not knowing if she would ever see him again. <laughs> um, I just can't even imagine what that was like and for my grandpa to not know if he would ever see his wife and child again. 
and um, but he made it and you know thankfully because he was a medic he was not actually out on the battlefield and that probably you know gave him a little higher chance of making it through but he definitely had a sense of service to his country which I very much respect that sense of service to something that's greater than yourself and I just really respect his view of you know having that sense of service while also very much believing in working towards a world without war. So that really left an impression on me. And when my grandpa returned home from the war, my mom and her twin sister were born. My mom is twin. My mom and her sister were truly baby boomers. And just all the stories, and I've seen all of these pictures from their childhood growing up, he just sounded like the most fun-loving kind of dad that was out there. Like, and it, it, that's how he was as a grandpa. He was fun-loving and just very affectionate, always giving hugs, always giving back rubs, you know, foot rubs. Um, you could tell that that was probably one of his love languages. And always just being a good role model and, um, you know, being present for all of, you know, his kids' big life events and his grandkids. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that down the road here, but he was just a very devoted husband, very devoted father, very much believed in family. Um, family always came first and it showed. You know, all his life he's just had this most amazing sense of humor. He was just joking all the time. He was such a funny guy, you know, and he had all these little ditties that he would sing and he must have learned them when he was in the army or something. Um, but these just these funny little ditties that he was singing all the time. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Oy, 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 oy. You came close to getting shot. <laughs> you didn't know about that, did you? No. World made six days, finished on the seventh. According to the contract, it ought to have been the eleventh. Mason got drunk and the masters wouldn't work. So they had anything to do with the little dirt. Dirty, 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 dirty. You got big eyes, yeah. Yeah, and they're wide open. They need to shut them eyes. Yes. Look <laughs> <laughs> about baby and flop. Top. When the wind blows the trail, flop. <laughs> Down for baby, don't you do it all. And da, 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 da. Even if you got on your overall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big truey. <laughs> that's a big truey. <laughs> Just poking fun all the time and finding a way to make all situations humorous, you know, in a respectful way. You know, even in hard situations, he found a way to bring laughter. But that brings me to the other thing. He had an amazing faith. Um, this is another way that my grandpa had a huge impact on me was his faith. He was, you know, an active member of the Methodist Church his entire life. And he's one of these people who truly lived a Christ-like life most of his life. Um, always showed love and compassion to everyone. Everyone. Unconditional love. I mean, it was just so evident in how much he loved his wife, first of all. Um, he was devoted to her to the very end. He had his wedding ring on him when we saw him after he passed. He wore his wedding ring to the very end. Even though he had been apart from my grandma for 17 years, she had been gone for 17 years and he wore his wedding ring that whole time. And that just, oh, I'm gonna get teary just thinking about how devoted to his wife he was. And he just believed in the importance of marriage and having a family. It was just so evident in how he lived his life and how loving he was. But anyway, and just in terms of his faith, like, he really showed with his life. Like, I feel like my grandpa was one of the first people that I actually saw in my life, like, living a Christ-like life. I actually remember it really struck me when my other grandfather died. This is my dad's dad and my grandpa that I'm talking about is my mom's dad. And so 
when my dad's dad died, he was there. Like he was in the room, he was present. I have this memory because I was there and he came immediately and he took off his hat out of respect. And, and he was just like that all the time. He um, was, whenever anybody was sick, whenever anybody was dying, he was there. Um, he was, you know, like that's what Christ did. He was with the sick and dying and the oppressed and just always showing love and respect and dignity. And my grandpa did that throughout his entire life. He was always there. He always showed up, always showed up to show love and support. And um, it was just incredible. Coming back to talking about um, showing Christ-like character and talking about my grandma, my grandmother developed Alzheimer's um, and she lived with Alzheimer's for the last probably 15 years of her life. I mean, it was it was very slow progression at the beginning, um, but the last, you know, maybe seven, eight years, she declined significantly to the point where she didn't know who I was, she didn't know who her kids were, um, but she always seemed to keep this trust and she always seemed to know who grandpa was and even though she did she wasn't fully there she always trusted him because he was her caregiver and he took care of her every need all the way up until the very last week of her life when they moved her into the nursing care with the hospice when she was dying and I just I can't even wrap my head around how Christ like that is he cared for her with his own two hands all the way to the very end and loved her and was devoted to her even though her mind was gone I just it's going to make me so emotional talking about it but I just I only hope that um, my marriage can be that strong like I said before he was always present not only in the difficult things but in the joyful things you know he rejoiced when those in his family was, were rejoicing you know he was always there and proud is what I like to say he was you know obviously for his own kids weddings and the births of all of his grandkids and then again with his grandkids he was there for my cousin's wedding um, and actually, Bill's and my wedding was his last trip. It was five years ago. Um, Bill and I have been married for five years. And um, it was his last trip away from home because he was, you know, physically, even five years ago, it was getting difficult for him to travel. But he told me, I remember, <laughs> it's gonna make me cry again talking about this, but he said, Amanda, come hell or high water, I am going to be at your wedding. <laughs> He said that and he was even though it was like a 95 degree day he sat there and in the front row and and you could just see the pride in his face and it just felt so wonderful to have somebody that I love and respect so much who had a beautiful beautiful marriage you know say that he was proud of me and Bill and was so supportive and loving and present even though it was his last trip was to our wedding. It's been a long time since Amanda cartwheeled down the bowling alley. We've come a long way since then. Things get a little rough when they go down the road. Then go south. Remember your ring. Remember the dress. Remember your vows that you made. And so I want to go off with a blessing. May your run and not be weary. May your heart be filled with joy. May your run, may your love of God continue to give you that hope to keep you strong. May your run and not be weary. And may your lives be filled with song. May the Lord you travel always lead you on. Grandpa was 91. 
And, you know, we weren't even sure if he was going to make it long enough to be at our wedding. And then he was. He lived long enough to be he, to make it to our wedding. That was his last trip. And then we didn't know, I mean, if you've watched our any of our videos, you know we struggled with infertility for a while. I really wanted him to meet his great grandkids it, once we had kids and we weren't sure if he would make it that far. And then he did. He got to meet Alex and we were just so grateful and thankful that it, and amazed that he got to meet our son. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello, hello. <laughs> hi, hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> hello there, young man. <laughs> Just learned to smile this week. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, you're smiling at Greek Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> and then he got to meet Sophie. Um, the last time that we saw Grandpa was Father's Day this last year, and um, that was the first and last time that he got to meet Sophie. And I'm going to insert a video here. Um, it's it's a sacred little moment when he got to meet his last great grandchild, and he was it was almost like he knew that this would be the one and only time he would see her and he was just so present. It was almost this moment where like life and death met together, like the cycle was together, you know, brand new baby, little brand new baby Sophie and here he was 95, almost 96 and they, you know, as Phil put it, they were kind of ships passing in the night almost. They had this one moment together and it was just so sacred and so special. Just feel the energy right now. Here, let's go take the ball over here. Let's take the ball over here. Come on. That's pretty special. Mm -hmm. Sweet little girl. Yeah. Is he gonna go ball to great grandpa? Are you sharing the ball with great grandpa? <laughs> Dad, happy great grandfather's day. Yeah, that's happy right. Happy grandpa's day. Happy father's day. <laughs> yes, happy father's day. Big time. I remember posting that video on on Facebook at the time, and one of my friends said, "I can't help but thinking that he is going to be an angel watching over her and all of you." And now that's true. Watching him cradle her and and talk to her, and I just know that's what he's doing with all of us right now from up in heaven. We are just so so grateful that he got to meet both of our kids. At the beginning, we didn't know if he would make it to our wedding, and here he got to meet both of our kids. It's just so special and we are so grateful that he lived as long as he did and got to see as much as he did of the next generation and I know that that was special to him just seeing that continuation of life. All this is to say my grandpa was a fine, fine example of how we ought to live. A true good human being and I I truly, truly live, I can live a life that is, you know, half as good as his life was. He truly has left a legacy for me and my family, 
and everybody who knew him. Just before we left, after he passed, I, I can't tell you how many times that the staff there, because this was he's lived in this retirement home for almost 25 years. He's been there that long. And um, so he knew everyone. The staff, I mean, his friends, I mean, and he'd even had a, a bunch of his friends pass before him too, and he still had this many friends. I mean, you, he was just that kind of guy. Like, he was a social butterfly. He just was kind and gentle to everyone. He made friends so easily, and you could tell that, like, there was, you know, it was a loss to a lot of people. I just, you could tell by how many people stopped us as we were just walking through the halls. It was kind of overwhelming, even just in that building, how many people's lives he made an impact on. And that's not even including all of the other people his life has touched all the people who have already passed and all of his extended family. Um, we've had so many extended family members co contact us and tell us just, you know, what a fine human being he was and how they always think so fondly of him and um, what a role model he was and what a mentor he was. I really still think that even though he's gone now, he's still going to be a mentor. So that is my tribute to my grandpa. Mm -hmm.